Please. We are now in public session for the first meeting of the Committee on Housing and Homelessness. Uh, we have a quorum and we have no apologies. The first item on the agenda is the election of a chair and I must now ask for uh, nominations for the position of chair. Uh, Deputy Butler. Um, thanks, Cahir. Like, I would like to nominate Deputy John Kern from Dublin Midwest as chair of this committee. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Butler. Uh, Deputy Function. Um, I'd like to nominate Deputy Owen O'Brien for the position of chair. I think that this will be a very good committee and hopefully we'll come up with a lot of solutions for our housing crisis and it's a cross-party committee which is welcome but um, it was an initiative put forward by Sinn Féin and I think that Deputy O'Brien would be an excellent chair and I'd like to nominate him for that position. Uh, thank you. Thank you Deputy Function. Any other nominations? Yeah, Deputy Wallace. Sorry. No, I second on O'Brien. Any other nominations or people wishing to take the floor? Okay, um, there being more than one uh, nomination uh, in, the, in the order in which they received, the questions will now be put in turn in respect of each of those nominations. So the first question I put is that uh, Deputy John Curran be elected as chair of the committee. All those in favour say ta. Ta. All those against say Neil. Neil. I think that the question is carried. Both. Both all? Yeah. Okay. And so on that basis, I will now uh, proceed uh, to, to call the vote. Yeah, Deputy, uh, that the question again is that John Curran, uh, Deputy John Curran, be elected as chair. Um, yeah, Deputy Mary Butler. Yes. Uh, Deputy Catherine Byrne. Just to clarify, yes. uh, we are voting for Deputy yes. Curran alone at the moment. Uh, Deputy Kenny? Yes. Uh, Deputy Coppinger? Uh, no. Uh, Deputy Cowan? No. Oh. Uh, Deputy Curran? No. Oh. Uh, Deputy Dorkin? No. Oh. Uh, Deputy Function? Neil. Yeah, Deputy Harty. Neil. Yeah, Deputy O'Brien. Neil. Yeah, Deputy O'Dowd. Oh. Yeah, Deputy O'Sullivan. Neil. Yeah, Deputy Ryan. Oh. And uh, Deputy Wallace. Neil.
votes um, in support of the motion and uh, six against. Therefore, I declare that the question has been carried. <coughs> is working already anyway. Deputy Kern to take the chair. getting instructions already. Uh, first and, and foremost, uh, I'd like to thank those people who uh, voted for me. This is a committee of relatively short duration, and I want to say to my colleague Ono Brin, uh, it was interesting that both of us were from the same constituency, and I think that perhaps reflects the issues as we see it on, on the ground. From my point of view, uh, I will be fair and impartial and try to conduct uh, proceedings in a business-like manner. Um, I think everybody who is sitting on this committee today acknowledges the issues and I suppose our task is in the very short time frame afforded to us to come up with meaningful uh, proposals and solutions and as chairperson I will facilitate everybody's input into that in, a, in as constructive manner as possible. Um, and I'd like to thank, by the way, Owen for putting his name forward. I think it was worthwhile that more than one person uh, contested. It shows that it was something that people were interested in doing. Uh, I'll read the instructions that I, I have been given at this stage. At the request of the Broadcasting Recording Services, members are requested to ensure that during the duration of the meeting their mobile phones are turned off completely or switched to airplane or safe flight mode or any other device. Um, it's not sufficient just to put them on silence. Uh, in accordance with standard procedures agreed by the Committee on Procedures and Privileges for paperless committees, all documentation for the meetings uh, have been circulated to members on document database. Um, at this stage on the agenda, we have a, any other business and date of next meeting. Uh, it is an option if people feel uh, they would like to go to private session or if they want to continue in public session. I'm not sure uh, before we go to any other business. Are you happy to stay in public session? Yes, okay. absolutely. Well, at that stage, uh, we're at any other business, so the floor is yours. And then we'll organise the next meeting. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll start with uh, Owen O'Brien on this. Oh. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, and John, congratulations on uh, uh, your uh, election. I think it would be useful, given the fact that we have nine weeks, for us maybe to have a, an informal discussion just in terms of how we intend to structure the business of the committee, what we're hoping to do uh, over the period of time, because if we could get some in-principle agreement from members on that, then at least then at the next meeting we could hit the ground running. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to formally propose that we do that uh, as the next item under AOB. Anyone else? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Deputy uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, first of all, to congratulate you on your assuming the chair, even though it be for a short lifespan or whatever the case may be, this is a very important issue and it, 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 it behoves us all uh, to dedicate ourselves to ensuring that we identify priorities and that we resolve to deal with the issue in a non-political way with a view to resolving the problem that affects thousands of families all over the country at the present time. And particularly in the Greater Dublin area, those of us who represent that area, those areas know full well uh, the serious issue that the housing, lack of housing and homelessness is at the present time. So there are two issues that I would like to see dealt with. One is the short-term issue, that of homelessness, or uh, as a result of, 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 uh, of uh, 
de demographic changes, uh, the people who find themselves homeless through no fault of their own, who ordinarily would not be homeless, and also the mid to longer term issue, that of providing uh, uh, for the future uh, a, a good solid basis for identifying the problem before it becomes an emergency and putting in place the necessary structures to do so and to try to ensure that whatever happens hereafter uh, um, and that this report will identify this, that we don't have peaks and valleys in the future, that housing is a requirement that is ongoing, that it, it, it is ongoing regardless of economic situations or whatever. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan. Uh, thank you very much and congratulations. Um, we don't need to <clears throat> reinvent the wheel. We all know what the problems are. We've had so many reports, we've had so many meetings and so much statistics on the, the difficulties and we know the range of issues that there are from the private rent accommodation to the homelessness to the increase in rents to the mortgage arrears problems. Um, the then uh, well, still acting minister, um, Alan Kelly, had a very high level meeting over a year ago. So many people were involved in that. I presume we have proposals from that. There was a more recent meeting that some people attended. We'd have those proposals. I know, and like everybody here, I'm sure we got the calls today from the various housing groups asking for this, that, and the other. They all want to come in and meet us. Uh, I'm saying we don't need to reinvent the wheel and go back over old ground. I think if we could identify maybe three very simple questions that we could put to all of those people who are involved on how we address the issue as opposed to telling us again and again what the issue is. And I think that would be a practical way to go forward. Thank you. Deputy Butler. Um, thank you, Cahir Luck. Um, congratulations on your election. Um, I would just like to welcome being a member of this committee. Um, I think it's a committee that... Uh, it's, it's, it's not partial to any one area. It, 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 it's it's um, a problem that's felt all over the country, both urban and rural. And I think it's very important that we acknowledge that. I, I am in a constituency that I represent both a city and a county. So I think we have to strike a balance there that, that we do remember that. I would like to see us looking at uh, the lack of social housing, the lack of affordable housing, and the difficulty in finding half landlords. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Canny. Uh, thank you, Carla. I, I would like to say that I'm delighted to be on this committee. And I suppose when we mention homelessness, um, I just want to make sure that everybody is clear it's not confined to Dublin. It's confined to uh, – it's, it, it, it's in the regions, it's in the small towns, and the, the issues are there. And I agree with uh, Deputy O'Sullivan that we needn't be talking about what the problems are from now on. We need to try and come up with a few solutions. Um, it won't be easy, but I think if we all work together and put our collective uh, brains together, we should come up with something that will actually help things. And I think the, the short term is what we need to concentrate right now, but overall a policy going forward so that housing isn't uh, a knee-jerk reaction to demand that is actually planned for, for the next probably 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Coppinger. Um, thanks, Kirk. Yeah, just in terms of the parameters of the committee, I think uh, I, I agree that homelessness and the housing crisis is everywhere, but it is also concentrated in particular areas worse than others. Um, I come from a constituency I'd argue is probably the worst homeless black spot in the country, based on figures, not based on anecdote. But um, I just wanted to comment on what's been said so far. I think the first thing this committee has to do is declare that there is a housing emergency, which the previous government was very reluctant to do. And I think immediately the, the emergency will be to move to stop homelessness increasing, which it clearly is based on the last month alone. In January it was a threefold increase and last month it was, um, I think, a 48% increase in some locations. So I, I think the committee has to look at emergency legislation that's needed because we've had the minister telling us that the constitution is an impediment to resolving this. Um, I think that's something that the committee has to grapple with. Um, stop people being economically evicted, introduce proper rent controls. And I think the issue of compulsory purchase order has to be on the agenda of this committee immediately in relation to distressed properties and vulture funds. I just want to say that I've heard comments about we have proposals already and reinventing the wheel. I think there's a bit of a danger in that because I, I wasn't at that meeting and I'm not exactly sure what was agreed at it, but we, knew, we need radical change because what was proposed before hasn't been working. And um, 
we need the, this committee has to come out and say that there has to be public house building, home building on a major scale, which would be a very radical change in policy of the last government and indeed the previous. And I think as well as that, the role of NAMA has to be discussed at this committee. Um, there's huge widespread public concern about the way NAMA has been allowed to sell properties and also build but not affordable housing for the actual people around that area who need them. So just lastly as well, in terms of inviting people, I do think that there's people we should invite. I agree, we know what many people have said already. Uh, one of the groups that is new on the scene, if you like, is the tenants that are actually uh, in danger of being evicted right now from Vulture Fund owned properties, for example, in Tyrrellstown, also in Cork and in other areas. So. I would like that they will be brought in because we have to look at actually unique schemes to keep them in their houses if the government does acquire them. Um, not just social housing wouldn't be the only solution. So, thanks. Um, Deputy, uh, de uh, sorry, don't, uh, Deputy O'Dowd first. Uh, please. Uh, Cogorlick, uh, Cogorlick, also, I think from our career look, uh, this is a very important committee. Our time is very short. And I think it's important to hear that whatever documents I wasn't a member of previous committees, uh, that they would be the library might facilitate us in giving us whatever documentation may have been produced recently by Rockdust committees or and you know what the germane or the important reports that would be there would be circulated. We need to be armed with all of the information, including, as suggested, the, the voluntary agencies and housing agencies, whatever they've sent in, that we would see that. And I would agree we should ask them, uh, interrogate them on the basis of, you know, how do you solve this problem? What do we need to do? I think we should invite in NAMA, certainly, absolutely. I think we should invite in the representatives of the county managers association because they are statutory agencies right around the country deep. So we get to the nub, not for them to tell us, you know, what's wrong, but how do we fix it? I think that is the, that is the way we need to deal with it. I also think it's very important, uh, the huge controversy about rent allowance and uh, housing assistance payment and so on, I think we should have the practitioners at the coalface or the community welfare officers, representatives, and I know in our constituency or county, we have, a, we have housing accommodation officers who deal with homelessness on a daily basis and what solutions they feel uh, they, they, they we should uh, put in the mix. And the final point I want to make, regardless of who ends up sitting around the cabinet table, be it parties or personalities, I think that uh, what my party has put forward is an action plan for housing. In other words, just like the action, uh, similar to the action plan for jobs, that we would give, uh, we would produce a document that would itemise specific proposals. Uh, they don't all have to agree, with, they, don't all, they can be complementary or they could be even contradictory in some respects, but to agree on what we can, but put it out there and press the button for the housing uh, issue to change radically and urgently. Thank you. Deputy Ryan. Thank you. I want to congratulate you on, on your uh, assuming that role. Look, this is, uh, together with health, this is the most important issue of our time. And unlike, uh, you know, unlike health, where a health situation where it gets to a crisis, you will be dealt with, there will be a solution. In relation to this matter, uh, you know, we very often cannot find solutions, satisfactory solutions in any event. Uh, as I say, it's probably the only issue that frustrates me at my clinics. It's one I just cannot give any advice to. I'm saying, look, you know, go and find somewhere to rent, and I know there's nowhere to, to find to rent, and I know that the people I'm dealing with have been searching and searching, and it's very frustrating. Uh, and that's because of the lack of housing supply at the moment. But we need to find solutions, uh, and I agree with other speakers, we need to find solutions. We need to do our work in a non-political way. But I think it is very important that we look at the current plan. What is in place? What is, you know, in the pipeline? What are the deliverables? What are the timelines? Um, and uh, we need to work in, in that vein. We need to at least see that, because there's no point in recreating something that's already in train. We have a very short space of time to do our work, and I think that should be reflected in, in how we think about how often we meet and the frequency of that. Uh, so certainly, 
as a group here, we should dedicate our time over the next number of weeks and to giving as much time as we can uh, and the frequency of meetings reflecting the urgency of the matter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Cowan. Thanks, Chair, and a joint with others in congratulating you assuming that role. Um, to pick up on what Deputy Coppinger has said, this is undoubtedly an emergency and should be treated as such. I think it's no harm that the, the, as I ended all last week that the time frame is, is short and we have to be focused and um, seek to make real and meaningful proposals, as you said yourself, uh, a cross party uh, committee such as this uh, should be focused in its efforts to direct government uh, to address these issues in the way in which we see fit, having consulted with the various stakeholders. And on that score, and you, you know, the deliverables, you know, your public, public housing, social housing is one strand, the private sector, the rental sector, and the, 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 the mortgage difficulties that exist. And I think it's important that we separate those four. It's important that we ask uh, the stakeholders or those at the cold face in relation to those four uh, headings, those four areas, the relevant expertise be brought in to be, uh, to be questioned in relation to uh, how they can be um, improved or how the tools available to them can be improved in order for uh, delivery to be, to, to, be, to be quicker and any legislation that's needed emanating from that also that we direct uh, such, such changes. I know last week during the course of the debate many people uh, made meaning, made reasonable, what appeared reasonable, and, and, and suggestions with the best of goodwill and good faith. And I think it would be important that we got copies of those or the, the, the points from within them uh, to make them available to us all as well. Uh, we're just coming out of an election. Many parties and, 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 and those of none uh, had suggestions, had, 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 had manifestos. I think they should be made available also. And. Um, you know, again, to, to try and try and develop a structure and a plan to match that structure, and for a report to, to, to follow. And you know, as I said in the doll last week, that the, the numbers as they are in the doll uh, is, I believe, will be of help and assistance to a committee such as this uh, to seek to uh, get the approval of the doll and, and, and for it then to work in conjunction or to direct government or the representatives within it to treat this with the emergency measures that are required in order to address it, because whatever about the system that's there, it's a system many in, in, in the provision of public and social housing, for example, you know, the department officials tell us they've moved the, the, the process from selection of sites to, uh, to the delivery of units from eight stages to four, and still we all have instances throughout our own constituencies where, um, you know, we're 18 months down the road, down, down through that process and no ground opened. So if it's down to four stages, maybe it needs to go to two stages. And, and, and the department and the officials and those that work within the system need to be held to account in that regard. But look, that, that's, for, that's for, for, for us to question and tease out the difficulties that exist in order to ensure that the correct measures and changes are made in order to deliver units, because units are not being delivered. And as I said earlier, you know, the private sector's responsibility too, and there are initiatives that could be uh, put in place in order to entice those to be to, to, to be more successful. And the area of rent allowance, as Brenda said, and the whole mortgage dis distressed area, vulture funds, mortgage interest rates, it kind of overlaps with other committees, I know, and there might be some information that could be gleaned from other committees to help and assist uh, us in order to make uh, the sort of recommendations that can address those issues. So if we could just set out a time frame, or, you know, various uh, agree the way in which we're going to deal with this on, a, on a, the chronological order in which we'll do it. And then, um, you know, is it two meetings a week, over nine weeks or whatever? So let's get the bones of it agreed today rather than getting into the meat of it. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy. Uh, Councilman Byrne. Deputy Byrne. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, Chair. And just to say thank you for allowing your name to go forward for to be Chair of this committee, even if, if it will be only a short time, just to congratulate you. I was delighted to support you. As was all of us as public representatives know on a daily basis, the difficulties out there for people trying to uh, have a home, no matter where they live, in Dublin or right across any other part of the country. 
not having a home and not having a place to call home is very, very difficult, particularly when you have very young children and you're being changed from one accommodation to another. So I think we have beholden to those people to do as much as we can together as a committee to make sure that we leave no stone unturned to be able to put some concrete proposals in place to deal with this. Um, just on, on, on the other thing, on, not only on social housing, but I believe on private housing as well. There's many young couples out there starting off for the first time, and because of the lack of, of supply and the lack of housing, that they're finding it very difficult, even when they do go to view a place or put, uh, try and get into the market, it's very difficult. And I think we have to think of those as well. So into the future, into the next couple of weeks, I suppose, whatever we do, we must work together as a group. Thank you, and put aside any other issues that we have to try and pull together some kind of solutions to the problems of all the young people and the homeless people out there. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Function, please. Um, thanks, Chair, and congratulations to yourself as well. Um, it's been said that we have nine weeks. Obviously, it's a short time, and I think we have to make sure that we are constructive in that time and that we're not just coming in talking at these meetings, that we're actually coming up with solutions. So I think we need to decide some of the practical things today. For example, how often are we going to meet? I would say at least once, if not more, a week would need to be meeting. Um, it is a regional problem as well. Obviously, it's, it's concentrated more in the cities, um, sort of Dublin, Limerick, Cork. But I mean, it's, it's a major issue everywhere. So I think not only should we be inviting groups in here, I think we should be willing to travel as a committee. We have a national remit to other areas to get a regional balance and to not just speak to representative groups and people that are involved, but actual individuals themselves who are going through homelessness or emergency accommodation or all the different stories out there to get a flavour of the, the, the situation and from a regional level as well. I think that's really important. Um, and just in relation to some of the... We need to obviously look at long-term and short-term. I think we need to look at reviewing the state supports that are in the private rental market as one of the short-term measures. But maybe if we just focus on some of the practical things today, like how often we're going to meet. And I think we should look at not just meeting here, but also be willing to travel to other areas where there is also a housing problem outside of Dublin. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Wallace. Thank you, Chair And uh, congrats as well. I get the latest. Don't hold it against me now. I didn't vote for you. Um, I think most of us would agree that... Um, that things will get worse before they get better, uh, unless there is some immediate uh, measures taken uh, to deal with homelessness and the housing crisis as it presently stands. In the short term, uh, we, we, can, we can be certain that things will get worse unless there is some uh, radical measures taken. Um, people are saying that this should be non-political. Um, I don't know uh, how possible that is. Um, I wish it was. Um, I, I don't know what potential this committee has. I mean, there is a few serious stumbling blocks as to how we go forward. Um, are we going to are we going to um, advocate for direct construction by the state again through the local authorities uh, in in relation to social housing? Uh, or are we going to continue to rely on the private sector, which has failed to deliver? Um, and with regard to the private the supply of private housing, um, there's huge challenges there as well uh, as to how we build and what we build, uh, and how we address the fact that there's a massive affordability problem in Ireland, and how do you tie that in with... Uh, uh, building an appetite uh, for the private sector to actually build, I think, is a massive challenge um, without actually uh, feeding them carrots, uh, which ends up costing uh, the public too much. Um, how do you, if we have the wherewithal and the, the will to actually um, go back into uh, agreeing to let the state actually provide housing? Uh, through the local authorities, which I think is what we should be doing. And then you have the big question is, uh, are we going to agree on how that should be funded? Because, obviously, if it goes on the books, um, 
uh, we end up breaking our 3% rule. Uh, if we go through PPPs, it just costs too much. Uh, PPPs cost end up in the range of 15%, whereas we can borrow money for less than 1%. So why should we pay 15 times the money for, for the price of the money that we need to, uh, to borrow to build uh, a serious amount of social housing. I mean, we're really talking uh, about a minimum of about 10 billion if we're serious about dealing with it. And I think that we need uh, a break from the fiscal rules from the Europeans. I know the French and the Germans have broken it when they feel like it. Uh, I know the Brits are threatening to break it now for investment infrastructure uh, in infrastructure. Um, and I think that it's absolutely paramount that we are giving a, given a break by Europe to actually be allowed to borrow money for less than 1% to spend a, a minimum of 10 billion providing social housing to address uh, the crisis uh, over the next couple of years. Thank you, Deputy Wallace. At this stage, um, the final speaker at, the, at this particular point is uh, Deputy O'Brien. Uh, thanks, Chair. I suppose just to, to contribute to the debate, I mean, when Sinn Féin kind of initiated the idea of the committee, we were very keen that it tries to do two things, and it's in the spirit of what most of the people have said so far, which is, on the one hand, to kind of look at uh, uh, the current state of the crisis and to try and come up with constructive propositions that we could propose to government, whoever that is, to tackle some of the short-term and the longer-term problems. So we're very keen that it's done in that kind of constructive spirit. What I would say, however, is there is also a degree of urgency, not just because we have nine weeks, but because the situation is, uh, as we all know from our constituency clinics, getting worse. There are more families presenting as homeless uh, uh, every single day, not just across the city, but across the state. Uh, we have more children in emergency accommodation than we had six months and a year ago. So I also think we have to, to, to I suppose, recognise a degree of urgency in us doing uh, our job as well. What I'd like us to, to do is, first of all, I'd like us to come away from today saying very clearly we're open to submissions from external organisations, that any organisation that wants to make propositions, proposals or written submissions should be invited to do so uh, as of today so we can start uh, hearing some of that information. I also think there is a value in bringing people in in front of the committee. I take Maureen's point that there have been a lot of discussions. But the situation has moved on a fair bit. There are things that were agreed, say, a year ago. Uh, uh, and they, uh, in the view of many of us, aren't working. And therefore, I think there is a value, as Maureen is right, in a focused way to bring people in. Uh, on that basis, I think there is at least nine sessions, kind of thematic sessions, we could consider. Uh, and most of them have been said in one shape or form here. The first is I do think we need the minister here. Uh, Brendan outlined that we need to know where things are at in terms of the current government housing plan, and he's right. Uh, and I think the first opportunity should be to have the minister here outline what he sees uh, his department is doing, and then we can uh, directly put questions and tease out some of the concerns we have. There is a need, I think, for a session just on homelessness, uh, including a variety of the sectors, NGO, local government, uh, and others. There is a need for uh, a session on social housing. Uh, and again, not just uh, to argue, as many of us will, there needs to be more investment, but also to bring in local authority officials and departmental officials to let us know what those barriers are uh, that Barry is outlining and to see if those things can be removed or, or speed up the delivery uh, of the units that are being promised as well as, as the broader amounts. I think there's a need for stuff around private housing. Uh, I'd be very interested to hear from uh, developers, from estate agents, from mortgage brokers, for them to outline what they think the current blockages in the market uh, at the various stages of the supply and access of housing. Uh, private, land, private rental sector, I think, again, is a standalone se session. Uh, and I'd like to have some representatives of landlord organisations in here, as well as NGOs like Threshold, etc. So I think that's a, another standalone session. There is a lively debate out there. Uh, we've heard the Master of the High Court. Uh, we've heard uh, legal experts and social policy experts give their views. I think you could bring those people in and have a focus session, particularly around some of the issues in terms of the use of compulsory purchase orders uh, uh, or other tools that currently aren't being used. I think it's absolutely crucial, and, and uh, Mick has done a lot of really good work in the last two debates and before, about having a session on NAMA uh, so we can specifically look and tease out uh, some of that. We also need not to forget some of the social inclusion issues that are also part of this problem. Uh, we have an ongoing problem with the quality of traveller accommodation. We have very large numbers of people who were former residents of direct provision, who have got their stamp fours and are still stuck living in direct provision, even though uh, uh, they shouldn't be because they can't get access to the housing market. One other addition I'd like to propose is, and it does tie in a bit with what Ruth is saying, I'd like us to hear from the people who are experiencing the housing crisis firsthand. 
I think we should invite, whether it's in this forum as, or as Kathleen has suggested uh, at other fora, uh, for example, people living in emergency accommodation, residents from Tyrrellstown, uh, uh, young families who are stuck in overpriced private rental and unable to save for their deposits, so their testimonies can be put uh, to the committee as well and a part of the record. Uh, and I think they're all worthwhile. So I think just if we structured our work around, around those themes, invite small numbers of people to come in and make very focused presentations, uh, hear questions from those. Uh, and I think if we were to do that, as, as Barry suggests, maybe two meetings a week, that would still give us enough time then to try and produce a report and come up with, if we can, consensus recommendations, if we can't, minority and majority recommendations to say what can be done different uh, to try and address the problems. My last point is this, and thanks for the indulgence with the time. We need to accept whatever about things that are coming down the line, uh, that new approaches have to be part of any government's response if things are going to get better. Uh, because Mick is right, uh, the situation is getting worse every single day in the social housing sector, in the private for pur purchase sector, uh, and in the private rental sector. So unless there is some change in policy, whether it's in volume or in direction, the thing, things aren't going to get any better. So I would recommend that kind of approach to the committee. Thank you. Uh, Having listened to the various comments and trying to move things on, like it's, it's very obvious, obvious there's a wide range of issues from Deputy Function in particular summed it up well when she talked about the short term issues and the immediate issues and then the longer structural terms issues and Deputy Wallace talked about, you know, the building program and so forth and Deputy Count saying, you know, the emergency at back. So, I'm just conscious of the fact as a committee, our first port of call is in a week's time where we have to make an interim report to the Dáil. And I think just listening to everybody speaking and their contributions and the, 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 the range of issues, I think most of us are agreed that this committee will need to meet twice a week, and just from a housekeeping point of view. Is, is everybody happy enough with, with those gentlemen? At this point, if you would bear with me for a few minutes, I'm going to propose that we go into private session to decide amongst ourselves how you'd like to structure the business for the because a number of you have made recommendations and it might be worth trying to advance those because we do have, it's the 28th, isn't it, in this? We, we're supposed to make an interim report to the Dáil by the 28th. So I'm wondering, would we go to private session and try and, uh, try and decide amongst really? ourselves how we want to? <coughs> Deputy O'Brien. Yeah, without being awkward, look, everybody's talking about new politics. Uh, there's no reason why we can't discuss in public session the mechanics of how we do our business. I just think uh, there's a value in staying in public session, and I don't think there's going to be any disagreement from the conversation that we've just had uh, over how we're going to structure our business. So I'd say stay in public session. Happy to stay in public session. I'll just agree with what Owen said there, Deputy O'Brien. Can I just say one thing that we didn't uh, talk about was uh, in previous Oireachtas, uh, you often have people who would advise you on policy who wouldn't be members of the committee and not necessarily members of the staff of the Oireachtas. It seems to me, and I'm not familiar with the, with the academics on this, I say that in a respectful rather than a derogatory manner, but the, like I do know would say that in the 70s, I know that under uh, Minister Tully, who was a Labour minister at the time, there was a housing crisis and we built, I think, I can't just figure exactly, there were certainly as many houses as we're talking about building now, but there was somebody who could uh, check the record as to what steps were taken then, you know, what's happened in the United Kingdom, you know, where's the repository of knowledge that somebody could put their finger on that would be a professional researcher or the Oireachtas Library or whatever, so that when we're talking about what we need to do now, as other people said, we don't need to invent the wheel, but we might be able to pick some excellent ideas out of, out of analysis of what's been done in other jurisdictions and in our own jurisdiction in the past. I think we're just talking about yeah. public or private session at the moment, though. Well, no, no, I have, I've got, from, my, from my point of view, if people felt more comfortable... Well, and, to but, comment I, on everything No, else. no, if, if I, I put it to the committee, rather than having a protracted debate, if the committee yeah. were happy to stay in, in public session... Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Chairman, on that issue... Great. On that yes. issue, uh, the reason that I suggest that we go into private session is to try to avoid uh, a kind of everybody speaking on every subject and go around the houses on every aspect of it. I think that, and if I might, in, in that, so I don't mind, public and private is all the same, but I, I do suggest, and I make this suggestion as part of the work programme, that we should identify and have a response from the county managers or the, the respective county managers uh, throughout the country, or as many as possible uh, might be able to give an input in an effort to identify the extent to which they, within the respective uh, administrative areas, can, uh, can address the problems that we face 
in the short term, that's the emergency part of it, and the medium term in terms of planning for the future, and in order to coordinate the two. But we need that information fairly quickly. Uh, I have sought that privately in respect of my own local authority, and I have um, had some information uh, in respect of it, but we need it for the other local authorities as well. I think that if we're going to be successful in dealing with it, otherwise, in, in two months' time, we'll be still talking about it. Deputy Cowell. Can I propose we, 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 we deal with maybe five different areas and five targeted areas and invite relevant expertise and stakeholders from those targeted areas? And that would be five meetings in its own right. Like be public and social housing is one, uh, private housing, two, the rental sector, three, homelessness, four, and issues surrounding mortgage distress. Uh, five, if there's any more, I'm not sure, but if they were five separate meetings, relevant expertise, relevant information, privy to those areas, in the private sector, for example, you'd have CIF, you'd have, you know, you might have somebody from the from Planning Institute, you might have somebody from Board Panola, you might have somebody, from, you know, local authorities might have to come in, uh, uh, relevant expert relations, special strategy, that type of thing. And in, in the public and social, you have the voluntary housing associations, you have local authorities. Um, you know, then there's the whole issue of financing in relation to uh, public and private. You know, do, do you talk to somebody um, with expertise in, 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 in private financing? In um, you know, as has been mentioned, other countries may have. You know, credit unions, for example, are very interested in participating in the provision of funds towards the provision of housing. Again, they should be invited in. It's just to, it's to pick them and which area that suits suits them. And I would say that there's the bones of five or six meetings. That Now, they might take two meetings each. I don't know. But that's, that's my yeah. Again, this is just on the structure. I mean, I think if we agree with the approach of, of themed sessions, then we can add, if we want to add more, I mean, I would have more than five, but that would get us started. Uh, Likewise, I mean, we're not going to agree all of the, the names to attend now, but if the chair could kind of take to correspond with the members of the committee by email or through the clerks, we could add those names as we go. I mean, there are, for example, uh, academic experts like Michelle Norris, who's involved with the, the Housing Finance Agency. There's the head of the housing agency themselves, whose job is to provide uh, advice to government. There are other experts that are out there. So we could start circulating that and start with the themes. In terms of being helpful to the committee, based on the five, five categories that were given out, if they were circulated to the members, and if anybody wanted to add to those categories, in other words, something that they don't feel is adequately included, that's the first point. Are members happy to do that? We need a starting point. Oh, sorry. Can, no, you can want I come in on that? Yeah. There was nine areas outlined by Deputy O'Brien. I think that was more comprehensive. No offence to Deputy Cowan. But could we... It, it was quite well thought out. Um, we're just kind of, if people agree with them, uh, the only one proviso I would put is in relation to private housing. It's not that I don't, you know, private housing is fine. I don't think it should become the focus of this committee, though. No. I think. It's only one aspect. Yeah, I know, but uh, some people may have different views. I, I just think our purpose should be homelessness and the housing crisis, which is you know, not to be stimulating the private sector again. Can I raise one issue that I think should be, that was left out of the nine maybe, um, is the whole issue of finance. Um, there's been questions raised here by Deputy Wallace and others about whether Ireland as a state is in a position to fund, you know, a house building programme, to fund local authorities, etc., based on EU fiscal rules. We need to have a meeting to examine that because there's no point in us coming up with proposals if uh, then we go back to the doll, the Minister for Finance, whoever he or she will be, saying, no, sorry, we can't do this. There has to be a discussion about financing a house building programme and we could question people about it. Okay. Could, do you mind if I go back to you, Deputy O'Brien? If you don't mind, would you repeat the nine categories? Then? Yeah, please. So, and, and I, mean, I agree with, with Ruth on the, on the 10th. The first one is the Minister, because I think it would be a good starting point uh, for the reasons that Brendan said. The second one is homelessness, and you're looking at the likes of NGOs, the Homeless Executive, and local authority homeless sections, for example. CWO, if you can bring in their... Yeah, and the Community Welfare Officers. 
The next one is social housing. And again, you have local authorities, housing associations, housing finance agency, Department of Environment. I'm just... The next one is, and I, and I agree with, with Ruth, but private housing, because I do think it needs to be part of the discussion. And there, you are talking about developers, estate agents, mortgage brokers, etc. There's the private rental sector, NGOs, landlords associations. There's the issue of legal and, and academic expertise, and you know, Edwin Honan is one, Michelle Norris is another, the head of the housing agency is another, just to throw out some names. There's obviously NAMA um, as a standalone section. There's the social inclusion stuff, and again, I just think that we, we, we need not forget that, whether it's travellers, whether it's people stuck in, in probably in a direct provision, etc. You might have, for example, rural housing for elderly, or there might be some particular issues there. Again, I'll just strongly stress personal testimonies of people living the crisis. And I, I have to say that 10 suggestions is a very good one. The broader issue of, of how, we fi how we finance social housing or housing more generally. So there you're 10. To my first yes. point is sure, that sir. anybody coming in, it has to be extremely focused um, on what exactly we're looking from each particular presentation. And I think that is the kernel if we're going to achieve anything and if we're going to come up with constructive propositions. I want to know the history of, of each organisation and where they've come from and where they're at. We want to hear what their ideas and suggestions are in order to address the emergency and the immediacy of the situation. Your papers even before they come yeah. in so that we, it'll be question and answer. It's probably more constructive and, and puts everybody under proofs. Okay. Can I just time. say on that, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with Deputy O'Sullivan. We, I've read what focus point, I've read what all of them are saying. I'm sure everyone here must have, or we wouldn't be here. So I think it would be, no offence, a waste of everyone's time to just run through that again. So in terms of homelessness, we could imagine something different there. I mean, there, there's specific issues in, in relation to conditions that people are living in at the minute. And, and stuff like that. It's just we don't need to bring in all the organisations and hear what they. We, we know what they're saying. Okay. That one on homelessness. We need to hear about prevention. There are simple steps that can be taken to prevent more people, further people going into homelessness. And I think that again could be a very short-term solution as, as well. It could lead to better long-term effects. Deputy Ryan. Thank you, Chair. We, we, just in relation to previous comments, uh, in relation to what the agenda ought to be, we absolutely have to uh, consider public housing. The crisis at the moment is a crisis of housing supply, both public and private. So, we, you know, if there was an adequate, just now, if there was an adequate supply of private housing, the crisis wouldn't be as great because we would have kind of at least temporary solutions. At this stage, we've received, I suppose, a number of suggestions. And what I propose is that they be circulated by means of email. I think we've clearly indicated for the various categories, and some of them might take more time than others, that there are people we should invite in on those topics. Uh, when we start uh, disseminating this inf information, if members of particular groups, apart from being open to anybody to make a recommendation or submission, an open submission as was suggested earlier on, there may be particular groups that we would like to target for their response on particular issues. So members, when you see the documents as they're being, and this is, this is a drafting, it's a first phase, it's putting together some of the comments that have been made today, you need to respond to those in, in, in by you know practical proposals of who you think could be helpful to us on that. Um, I suppose at this stage we should. Um, is it, if, sorry, Debbie. Just uh, again, I'd like to propose is to go, go back to Kathleen's proposal. It is important that we're not seen as just focusing on on Dublin, and I do think having a number of sessions out of this house, uh, possibly, for example, in in some of the rural constituencies, or even in one of the Dublin constituencies where housing is problem is particularly acute. Just getting us out of here, I think, would be a valuable step to have the committee meetings, but uh, uh, at other locations. Deputy, and I think yeah, that could be, be explored. No, I, I agree with it, and it needs to be explored in sense of it needs to be relevant to the topics that you have put put out there. And I'm, I'm not dismissing it, but it, we we build it in in that manner. Deputy Wallace. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Well, Deputy oh. Canning. Sorry. I think we're, we're, we're all seem to be talking of the same type of language. I think we, we all know what the issues are. We've set out what maybe what uh, Owen has said about the, the structure of it. And I suppose what will happen is that you prepare a draft structure for us with uh, 
two meetings a week and we get on with the business. Um, and I think, you know, if you want an easy way of getting it going, as you said, bring in the minister first, find out what his problems are, uh, the first meeting, uh, it would be a great start to getting, find out what the issues that he finds are in the department and the local authorities, I think, have a huge uh, role to play and they should be brought in, in as soon as possible as well. And referring to a Deputy Congress talking about the, the, um, the approval processes and all that type of thing, that is a huge issue in the mid medium to long term, how we get them sorted out so we can deliver uh, houses faster into the communities. So I think we should just... Yeah, I just Thank want you, to Matt. make the point is, uh, I mean, we don't have an awful lot of time and uh, I don't know how many so-called professionals you're looking at inviting in here, but um, most people can spend an hour saying what can be said in 10 minutes and uh, if you want to start inviting people in here, uh, we're going to waste an awful lot of time um, talking and listening and uh, doing bugger all. Uh, unless you confine them uh, to very short presentations. Well, I think, I think you're right in that. Uh, and a number of people have said we don't need them to give their own history. We know the history of the organisations. And primarily, for most of us, it, it, most of us, we understand the issue. We're looking for the solutions and the proposals as they might see it. So I think you're right. If we're bringing in a substantial number of people, the proposals need to be very, very directed and specific. But that, that can be up to us to inform them in, in advance. Um, sorry, Deputy Ryan. Chair, just for the information of the committee, I, um, I have a sense that the Minister may not be around in next week for our previous commitments, so just in terms of timing of that. It's certainly, from my point of view, it wouldn't be the end of the world if we had some people in, such as homeless uh, representative bodies, who effectively initially define the problem as they see it. The next step could be, look, what solution does the Minister or the Department feel they have in place? And then we can build on that in terms of the adequacy of that response. Deputy Byrne. Um, uh, Chair, if we're going to have two meetings a week, one of them should be just solely dedicated to meeting groups and the other one should be just solely dedicated to the business here. Trashing out what was discussed with the groups and listening to their solutions. and Because I, I think if we start inviting people in at two meetings, we won't really get down to what we should be doing. And I think it's good to have one meeting where people would come in and then the second meeting that we could track back on what has been said and then try and see can we cobble locks and that together. That's just a suggestion. Anyone else? I'll just say, I think they, you could solve that by having an all day meeting. You'll start at 10 and go on till 1 or whatever and have your submissions from people in questioning and then in the afternoon you could tease out the issues ourselves. I mean, I, I, think, I think it's very constructive. There's one other thing if I could say, I know it's not, maybe not germane necessarily to this, but uh, the question of, of um, it's a serious problem with people who have disabilities and who have needs within their existing home in terms of adaptation. I'd be very interested in knowing a bit more about how we could improve the grant system, you know, with more transparency about it, more accountability, because it's a huge problem. People can't live in their own homes. They can't, I have somebody at the moment who won't be able to go to use the bathroom because they can't go up the stairs. They can't get it. They can't. They're having an operation shortly, and they'll end up in hospital. I don't know if anybody else have people like that. But I, I think there's a huge issue around that. Now I know it's, just, it's it's a very important issue. It's not the primary issue, but they end up in 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 in, in the institutional care. Uh, because we don't look after them in their homes, I think. I think that's a, that's a huge issue for me anyway. Deputy Coppinger. Sorry, uh, Kirk, just uh, two questions. Um, we're meant to be producing a, a kind of an interim report for next week. I'm a little bit mystified as to how that will happen. Um, have you some proposal on it? Because we, I'm just not sure how in a week, like a report would be suggest something that's been assessed and analysed and teased out. Um, maybe it's just the parameters that were... I was going yeah, to say, okay. my, my view in terms of obviously the, the report, the interim report was uh, as passed in the doll and it didn't, it's not prescriptive from the point of view, it doesn't say it has to have the answer. So I would hope that if we were to meet next week, the report is scheduled for the 28th, which is Thursday, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. that if we had a meeting certainly on Tuesday, 
Um, we are going to circulate some of the ideas from today, the possible contributors. Uh, I think the structure and how the, the committee is going to work for the period would be the basis of the report, not the recommendations or anything, just what we had agreed on the way forward. And that in, in, that's the proposal I'm, I'm suggesting to you, that the suggestions today be disseminated by email, uh, in particular people that you think would be worth bringing in front of this committee, and that we meet again next Tuesday. And I, I take the point, if the committee would like to meet on a Tuesday morning and feel that they need a break and meet again in the afternoon, that, like, because of the short duration, that might be uh, a worthwhile exercise. Um, I also think there's a very clear consensus that it should be two meetings a week to do the job of work in hand. Um, Can I just ask yes. a second question? Oh, that, that's fine. Um, the second question was just if the Minister isn't around, if that is being proposed as the first meeting and he's not available, there should be a, a plan B. Um, I, I do think, I, I agree we shouldn't be just inviting people in for the sake of it, but it would be absolutely disgraceful if we didn't hear from people who are homeless and some of the issues that are being experienced. I know we're all, some of us are very well familiar with it, we're hearing it on a daily basis. Um, but I, I, so I do think maybe that is something that could be done immediately. Um, and also, in terms of, I don't mind travelling around, but as long as it's not being done as a PR for the sake of it, like it's just no. Uh, and that was the time. point I made that, yeah. that if we travel, it has to be relevant to the section of work that we're doing. And you know, I suppose. The, people from all parts of the country are represented here, but if there is a particular reason why the committee should see homelessness or the housing issue in a different context, well then, then we, we build that into the programme and I don't have a problem. But not, I agree with you, we don't just travel for, for the sake, there has to be it's a, a time, specific, yes. time consuming this problem. Just on Deputy Coppinger's suggestion about bringing in people who are homeless or people who are in transition, who's going to make that decision? Who's going to pick those people? Because uh, I would be very interested in to know who's going to decide and who's going. To, how do we, how do we limit the amount of people? How do we ask them? First of all, how do we get their names and how do we decide on who's going to come in and who isn't? Because I think that would be a very, very difficult thing to do. Well, my suggestion would be that maybe if we want to have an hour or two, that we could visit somewhere where people are actually living. Mm. In one of the hostels, one of those hostels, that we could go instead of bringing these people in here, because I do believe as well, if the, if the meetings are going to be in public session, it'd be very difficult for some people who are homeless to put themselves into a situation where they're going to be on live broadcast right around the country, and I think that would be some some people might not like that at all. So maybe the suggestion that we may not all have to go, a group of us could go, maybe visit one of the hostels or the hotels. Or, uh, that's just a suggestion. I hear what uh, Catherine is saying, but I actually think it's really important that we give those people who are experiencing the crisis exactly the same position in terms of our engagement as a committee as everybody else, because their views are as important. Uh, as somebody who worked uh, for a homeless charity for a number of years, homeless charities can advise and, and suggest people who the committee could invite who they believe from working with them are competent and capable and, and wouldn't be vulnerable at risk. There are other organisations out there. I mean, Ruth has already mentioned residents from Tyrrellstown. I mean, very clearly, they could they have a, a committee themselves that they appointed, and they could uh, uh, nominate somebody. So I do think actually we would be giving people uh, uh, the status that they deserve by bringing them here to give them that opportunity, uh, and we would select them in the same way as we select anybody else, which is we make a decision as to who we think is appropriate to come in and, and present to the committee. Ryan, uh, two, two two elements. One is in relation the tradition of committees in here is that look somebody comes in, all of the members of the committee feel they certainly have to ask a question of the of the people coming in. Fourteen of us here, we all feel we have to somehow question uh, uh, the witnesses in relation to the you know the business of the day. The challenge I want to put to you, Chair, is that look, in thinking about this over the coming days before we meet again, is how can we get to a point where, as a committee, we're working together to find solutions uh, in practical ways, you know, rather than just going through the motions of, look, we're asking questions of people coming in and who asks the smartest question or whatever. We're charged in a short space of time in finding solutions to problems. And on that same note, 
I do question the value of wheeling people in who are homeless. I think we can bring the people in who represent homeless people. Uh, and I think we all can trust one another well enough that we're all practitioners. We all meet the people on the ground. We all understand the problems. We've all seen the, seen the, uh, the, the faces uh, of people who are in those crisis situations. And if the purpose of bringing them in is to just put them out to people outside of here, I think it's of questionable value. And I would seriously you know, ask that we think again about that element of it. I, well, I fundamentally disagree with that, and I'll explain why. Yeah. It's publicly known there's a housing and homeless committee being established by the doll. And we need to let people know who are experiencing it that they're also being listened to and are at the heart of it. I have no problem going visiting a hotel or a centre, but that's not the same. It's not public. Now, in terms of how we select people, I, I absolutely agree with Deputy Byrne. You have to be sensitive about something like that. If, if somebody is coming before the committee, they know it's public and they've chosen to publicly speak. I can tell you a lot of homeless families would love an opportunity to have a public you know, hearing of the issues. How would you choose people? We can all suggest a family if we want, or we can go to organisations. It's not one thing I would just stress as well. We have to have non-Irish people, because in my own constituency, actually, it's not widely understood in society. Non-Irish people are being hit hardest by homelessness because they're more located in the private rented sector. So, for example, they have particular issues. Um, I think the chair could talk to members about people and make a, a judgment on that. I just think it would be wrong if we just brought in organisations representing homeless people. Some people who are working for homeless organisations are making a lot of money. You know, it's not the same as being experiencing the problem of travel, transport, <coughs> obesity, diet, lack of cooking, facilities, all those things. To make a comment in relation, because obviously there's, there's mixed views on whether you bring in individuals or not. And we won't make a final determination on that today. We did suggest that we will circulate a work programme and from that we're asking for suggestions of who might or might not. That's not going to be signed off by a committee or mayor, but that will be signed off by all of us collectively. The names and the lists will be uh, discussed to make sure that who we're bringing is of benefit and merit, that there's something worthwhile. So in that context, um, whether you're talking about individuals or representative groups, those suggestions should be made and they will be, we'll make a determination as a committee, how many people, how many groups can we physically do and are they relevant to the various sections? Um, so as the, 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 the emails from the committee with the first initial, it's important that you come back with who you think either, whether it's individuals or representative groups for the different sections are included. Just, just one small additional point, and, and I'm just conscious of what Brendan was saying. This was just one thing to consider. Uh, people who are, for example, in the homeless system are users of public services, whether it's the social welfare services or homeless services, etc. They have an experience which is relevant to some of the recommendations that we're making, in the sense that they might be saying that their experience identified problems which somebody providing the service or funding the service might not notice. So I do think there is actually a practical benefit beyond the need to actually give them a voice to look at their experience too. So I just think that's worth considering. The, I'm, I am consider what the point I'm making is that that decision, the same as every other group, we will make uh, in terms of a collective decision how many, what groups and so forth, and it's not being ruled out. Um, and I yeah. uh, if you, I take the house keeping issues you have there, and if you give us a default reply by, say, lunch or 2 o'clock tomorrow, when you go ahead then with whatever you have at that time. But I suggest if you invite the Minister immediately, and I would say the City and County Managers Association, get them for next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to get, you know, obviously... Can I just bear with the yeah, question sorry, for one yeah. second? I, before that, and I'm, I'm not dismissing. In terms of next Tuesday, which will be our next uh, meeting, um, before we have anyone in, I think we have a piece of work to do 
to further develop and agree on some of the groups that we're going to do. So, without getting into the times, are we happy to do two parts people, next I think Tuesday? Chairman, people, I've no issue with that. People, people want yeah. to see action. They want to hear these people speak. No, but we're, we're happy to do both parts. Yeah. That we do well, a piece please. first to make sure that the various interested groups and the structures that the committee will be following for the, for the following weeks well, what I'm saying is don't Chairman, don't lose a week. I'm not lo no, but I'm, I'm putting the two bits. I'm, do I'm, next week. You're Tell them he's, he Deputy, has you're the, and that's it. De <laughs> Deputy, <laughs> Deputy, you're the, the, you're the uh, member of this committee who said you were prepared know. to sit from all day. I am. I have no problem with that at all. The point I'm making is I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying we do the first bit to ensure that the structures of which we're discussing discussing now, which are, which are no more than a whole lot of suggestions, can become adopted in some way by the committee. And following that, that yes, then we, do, we can go into a session where we have, and now your suggestion can follow from that That's if everybody is in agreement. Breed. He'll be left in here on his own all day. question <laughs> <laughs> you. So, sorry, Cahir, look, to, to clarify, in the morning we're going to kind of fine tune the, the schedule and the organisations or individuals, and then in the afternoon, are you going to try and set yeah. up that the minister and the managers will be brought in? Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. promise you that. That's what that's You're going to see if they can. But we look for you. I mean, there's an application. That's the place to start, yeah. Yes, Today and start. You're in position. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the point that. Uh, just one moment, please. Yeah. Uh, no, this, this committee needs you. Sorry about this, going through the, the, the mechanics of it. Um, our next meeting is on Tuesday. Uh, the morning session, or the first part of the session, to deal with finalising the structures. Uh, the afternoon session for the Minister and the City and County Managers, uh, which I can't comment if they're going to be available or not at this stage, but we will, we will do that. The one concern is, at this point, and maybe, maybe we'll be able to try and narrow it down, um, that we're bringing them in in a very broad format. Um, it goes back to some of the comments that were made earlier about the specific questions and whatever. So just to be conscious of that, that and I would hope that, uh, that, you, that you know as, as we go beyond next Tuesday that we can focus our questions and I, I suppose the submissions that people are prepared to make, that they're more, they're more specific and targeted. Uh, we, don't have that, we won't have that advice or direction ready by tomorrow to go out to those relevant people. But if you tell them, like, if, if we've got it right, and I think we agreed here, that you ask them if they want to give us a document in advance, that's perfectly oh, yes. fine. Yeah. But when they come in, uh, we, we'll be asking them about what, plan, what do we need to change? What do we need to do uh, to, to make this uh, situation resolvable? So, in other words, they're under proofs as to how, it, how they see it. And, and it's our, our job to ensure that we can carry out the practical suggestions we hear. Isn't that it? I, I, think, the, so the, I think that is the key to that, uh, that anybody coming in understands what this committee is all about, yes. is to identify the issues and find solutions and we're inviting them uh, to pro, uh, provide to us suggestions they have for solutions and to focus on that aspect of it rather than telling us what is actually wrong because if we all know what's wrong, uh, it's a matter of finding the solutions uh, together. Deputy Byrne. Uh, is there any chance that we can confine the, the meetings to maybe two hours, two and a half hours each? I mean, if we start at half ten and finish at one, that's two and a half hours. And if the afternoon goes from two to four, half four. Look, I'll be, I'll be, look I'll be in your hands. I will try and have the meetings, yeah. those meetings, as efficient as possible. Uh, but it, as you well know, Deputy, it depends on how the meeting is going and the content of it. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to cut it off arbitrarily. Deputy Ryan. It does help if time In terms of planning our weeks ahead, we're talking about a Tuesday meeting, is it? Yes. 
and what other day? Or? Tuesday and Thursday, probably. Give us a day in between. Like if, if we're meeting twice a week, um, I think the day in between might be useful too. So I would be suggesting to Tuesday and Thursday. Deputy Brin? We'll need a small amount of flexibility because if there is a government form and the new standing orders come in, we'll need to revise that. But we can start on that basis. But rather than two consecutive days. Um, yeah. 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 We'll see as we go along. Uh, sir, do we have a plan B if those people are not available uh, next Tuesday? Who we would like in as a No, priority. we don't. But if, 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 uh, the, if the committee would, at the moment, mm. um, the, the second part next week is the minister and the city and county managers. Now, it's relatively short notice. Mm -hmm. They're one and two in that order of invitation. Mm. If they're unavailable, who's three and four? If, would the committee like to make a suggestion at this stage? Could we have some of the civil servants who are at the top of those departments as well? We can ask them, um, yes. We should also be signing up NABA. Suggestion. Housing agency would be a key player. Sean, if you want to use your discretion, given yeah, yeah. the, the references you have already. Yeah. Yeah. I have enough to work, yeah. to work from, um, and, and like once we go beyond this where we're, where we're building a schedule, people will have more notice, and I, I think the expectation of their attendance would be uh, something better. But this is relatively short notice for some of them. Okay. Are members happy to adjourn at this stage and meet yep. next week on Tuesday morning? And you will receive the documentation. Just confirm what time next Tuesday morning, please. 10.30? Ten, 10.30, thank you. 10.30. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.